let's say that um, this reaction, uh, let's say we start start with 12 grams same equation hydrogen gas same reaction yeah same reaction we start with 12 grams of hydrogen gas reacting with excess nitrogen gas Reaction goes to completion. Uh, how many grams of ammonia gas is produced? All right, so why don't you copy this into your notes? You can try this again later, and then we'll go through the problem together. Maybe we can start by showing the wrong way to do this, and then we can see uh, the uh, right way. So here would be the wrong way. You might say that we're starting with 12 grams of hydrogen. So I would put the 12 grams of hydrogen uh, up here, and we're starting with excess of this. What does it mean that the reaction is going to completion? It means that we're going to keep going until we run out of something. And what are we going to run out of? The hydrogen, because we have this in excess. So we know that we're going to use up all 12 grams of this until we have nothing left, and then the reaction will stop. That's what it means for a reaction to go to completion. Now I want to figure out how many grams of ammonia are being produced. Well, I could try to do a conversion ratio. I could try to do 12 grams. That would be my starting information, 12 grams of hydrogen. And then what are my target units? Well, my target units, I suppose, would be grams of ammonia, because that's what the question was asking us for. And now we have to do a conversion ratio. But the only conversion ratio that we've learned how to do is that we have three moles of hydrogen for every two moles of ammonia. That's the only conversion ratio that we've learned how to get out of this. But that doesn't match up with this, does it? We need to have something that's in grams so it can interact with this but these are in moles. This is where we come back to what we talked about earlier. What are the units on the stoichiometric coefficients? The units on the stoichiometric coefficients are moles, not grams. And those are not the same thing. Um, so we have, so for example here, it takes um, three times as many moles of this as moles of this. But that, does that mean it takes three times as many grams of this as this? No, grams are not proportional to moles because some things weigh more than others. Um, just like, um, let's say that you have a room where, uh, well, just to say you have a room where there are uh, one dozen cats and uh, one dozen elephants. Does that mean that they have the same number of grams of cats and elephants? No. So um, these are like the stoichiometric coefficients. Just because the stoichiometric coefficients are the same doesn't mean the masses would be the same. So these don't directly tell us about the masses uh, because these have very different weights. So, I can't use this conversion ratio yet. So let's see what I do need. What units would it make sense to put down here for my first conversion ratio? Grams. Grams of what? H2. Yeah, we've seen how important it is to write the substance that we're dealing with all the time. That way these units will cancel because I want to get rid of these. And then if I want to use this, what units do I want to have up here? Um, well, you're going to really want to have uh, H2. Or you're going to want to have two moles of H. What type of H2? What's of H2? 
you have moles of H2 to interact with this conversion ratio. So this is in moles. So the point is, the stoichiometric conversion ratio is in moles. So I've got to have an initial conversion that goes from grams into moles before I can use the information from the equation. From grams into moles. All right, well, I already know what these numbers are. These numbers come from the equation. But where do these numbers come from? We haven't talked about that yet today. Do you mean remember where we would get these from? That's right. This is, uh, well, that's, uh, so what are these numbers? You can look that up if you need to. All right. Books. All of your books should have the periodic table in the front. Yeah. So what number did you get there? Well, uh, it would uh, one for uh, hydrogen. For, that's not uh, just a single uh, atom of hydrogen. Okay. Oh, well, but what number should I put down here? Oh, uh, excuse me. One or two. Which one? Two. Two. Yeah. Yeah. We want to know how many grams of hydrogen. So what we're doing here is we're looking for basically what's called the atomic weight yeah. or the the molar mass of the hydrogen. What your periodic table tells you is the periodic table tells you the weight of one mole of a substance. The periodic table tells you the weight of one mole of a substance. So that was telling us, um, now what the periodic table tells you, what was this, like 1.0008, something like that? You know, it just has it to, it doesn't have Oh, just 1.0. Point point point. All right, very good. Well, we, we should be, so we should say what are the units in our periodic table? Grams. That's right. That's what we, so that's what I really should have focused on. All those numbers in your periodic table are in grams per mole. So this tells us one gram of hydrogen atoms per mole. However, I'm not going to put the number one here, because as I think you were mentioning, there's two hydrogen atoms in one mo uh, molecule of H2. So this would give us two grams of hydrogen. This doesn't come directly from the periodic table, but we use the periodic table to get this number. Okay, so that would give us this too. All right, well, that's a very important uh, operation. So I, I guess most people know that they can use the periodic table to find molar masses, but not, every, not everyone is clear in their mind, what is the point of a molar mass? The point of a molar mass is molar masses are conversion ratios. The reason we like molar masses is their conversion ratios. A ratio is just a fraction, right? Well, a molar mass is grams per mole. That's a conversion ratio. Almost all the time that we use molar masses, we're using them as conversion ratios. All right, so now we have two sources of conversion ratios. The stoichiometric coefficients give us one type of conversion ratio between two different types of moles, and the periodic table gives you another type of conversion ratio between grams and mole of the same substance. By the way, if you look this up uh, in a book, they would say something like there are two grams of hydrogen molecules for one mole of hydrogen molecules. Usually molar masses are written in grams per mole. But that didn't stop us from putting the grams on the bottom and the moles on the top. Um, how did we know to write it this way? Because again, I started with the starting information. By writing the starting information first, I knew which unit to put on the top and which unit to put on the bottom. So again, a common mistake would be to write the conversion ratio first. No, first we write the starting information and the target units, and only then can we figure out what units to put on the top and the bottom. Even though molar masses are usually reported with the mass on top, there's no law that says we can't write it like this. And in fact, this is the way we have to for this problem. Um, on this problem, this was a little bit easier because we were told this was H2. But you're actually expected to know, just from memory, the molecules which are diatomic, even if you weren't told that. Um, and there's a good mnemonic for that. The, uh, molecules that are diatomic are the ones that end in ene or gen. These are the only elements that are diatomic. That means that their molecules have two atoms in them. For example, we just saw hydrogen. Hydrogen ends in gen, so it's diatomic. Also, oxygen ends in gen, so it's diatomic. There's also fluorine gas or chlorine gas. Those would also be diatomic. Or bromine liquid is diatomic. So the elements that end in ene or gen are diatomics. We could call them the gen uene diatomics. So this is a good mnemonic for remembering those. That's something that you are expected to have memorized for the test. Cool. So they don't, they don't have to tell you when something's diatomic. Uh, all right. 